Hey everybody, welcome to my channel again. Um, I'm Dark Amita from Split Polygon and this is gonna be a little mini-series about how can you make a natural looking environment using assets that you've downloaded from the internet or maybe use something like mega scans or um, you know other um, source like that. And the reason for this is because I have a lot of friends who are animators and modelers and stuff like that who are not really into look dev and into lighting and they kind of want to present their models or animations in a more more appealing more um, stylistic maybe um, way to kind of get more you know pleasant uh, looking results so I'm not gonna be going over into extreme technicalities I'm gonna try to kind of soften the technical language and explain it in a, a little bit more um, kind of like um, language that is understandable for people who are not into texturing and look development and, and that kind of stuff. So if I oversimplify something, just so you know, it's it's for a reason and, um, and we're going to dive right into it. So I have a barrel or something that looks like a barrel, like a crate. Uh, that is coming from Megascans and it's this guy, the wooden carrier ref, whatever that is. It's a barrel. So I had this guy and I exported it to Maya and we're going to go later into how you can, you know, use this and, and bring stuff to Maya. But for now, all we need to know is it's in Maya, it's just an object, it's insanely high poly because it's an actual scan, it's not a 3D model, like, not, not 3D model by hand, it's like, it's being scanned from real world. And it comes with, uh, with a bunch of textures as well, so if I load it up, it comes all nice and textured, so I'm gonna just disable that, for now we don't need to see it. So first thing we're gonna discuss is actually lighting. Um, how to activate Arnold, um, how to use lights and how to, you know, set up a basic lighting scenario. So I'm going to open this little um, icon with the gear. I'm gonna click that one. It's going to bring up the render settings. Um, Arnold is the default render engine in Maya and it should be selected. But if you have other render engines like I do, some of them may be picked. So just make sure you switch to Arnold and you're good to go. Um, Arnold is so simple um, to set up technically that you don't need to worry about too much technicalities like adding global illumination or any fancy settings like that. It's all being turned on for you. It's pre-configured. All you care about is quality of the image for now. There's, there's some other stuff we're going to talk about later about textures and all that, but um, for now, all you need to know is Arnold works with um, works well with the default settings that it comes with so you don't need to do any other just flick it on and forget about it all right so if we go to the Arnold tab and you go lights and we can create an area light we have area light sky dome mesh and the others we're gonna start with the area light and it's gonna be a tiny little object because this barrel is kind of big so if I scale this light up way up and move it and uh, position it just somewhere. Now this little pointer uh, of the light, this little line is gonna indicate where the light is gonna shine towards. So if it's like this, it's gonna illuminate this side of the scene. If it's like that, it's gonna, you know, this side's self-explanatory. The size of the light um, does uh, matter, but you have, um, some controls about that as well. So we're gonna look into all of these in a second. Now, here's the thing. If I open the Arnold render view, which is gonna come here, and we press and nothing's gonna happen. Why? Well, right now, let me move this out of the way and scale this render viewport down. Uh, this light is very, very dim the intensity of this light is very low. So if I select it, and if I go to Attribute Editor, which is docked on my side, my right side, uh, you have the color, intensity, and exposure. 
exposure is set to zero, intensity set to one. Um, what does that mean? Why is not showing anything if the intensity is set to one? Well, Arnold likes real world scale. All right. Um, the intensity and exposure pretty much do the same thing, but exposure works in stops and it's much more um, exponential kind of difference. If you go from five to six, it's exponential difference, while this is a linear. So this one is for people who are more like into photography or like cinematographers or stuff like that. So if you're working in VFX, you're going to get notes, um, you know, maybe increase the light one stop or half a stop and then you can use the exposure to accurately um you know adjust according to what the note from the supervisor was so just something like that and then you have the intensity which is just like a scalar value so even if i crank this up all the way to 10 you're not going to see anything this way like you need big numbers to get the light to shine on this object that's why i'm gonna Keep the intensity at one. I use the intensity for on and off switch most of the time, and I use the exposure to light my scenes. So if I set the exposure to I don't know ten, you see start to see slight light start to coming. Let's say thirteen. There you go. Start to see our object now. And if I start to rotate around, uh, if I use the Arnold render view which I am using right now this is different than Maya's render view so if you go to this icon this is gonna bring Maya render view these are different beasts this was back in the day when mental ray was the render view this was this one and Maya software and all the others and this is Arnold proprietary render view and it has a lot more options than this one so I'm going to close this one. And so to get this guy up, you need to go to Arnold, open Arnold render view instead of uh, rendering with this guy. All right. Just something to be aware of. So if I click the render icon, the little play button, this is going to go into interactive mode. So meaning if I tumble around, my render is going to update as I go. All right. So if I select the light again, I set the intensity to, I don't know, maybe 15. There we go. You start to see a lot more now. Now I'm going to select this plane and we're going to assign new material. And let's say Arnold standard surface. There we go. And by default, the material has some reflection, which I don't really want at the moment. So I'm just going to take the specular and then bring that back to zero. And I'm going to take the weight of this and set it to 0.2 which is like 50% gray. All right, so now we're talking, we have a light illuminating our object. Now, what else can we do with this? Well, we can change the color of the light. So the weight, as you saw, if you select the, um, the light, it has color, intensity, exposure. So color pretty much is if I make it orange, I have an orange light. If I make it uh, pink, you get the idea. Um, and then there is this called color temperature. This is something that is a measured value from the real world that uh, uses color temperature to, to um, uh, tint the, the color of the lights. So if I start to go higher with the numbers, you start to go into the cold values, and if I go the opposite way, you start to go into the warm values. This is like the sun uh, and the sky kind of um, colors. It's going to give you very natural looking colors um, that are measured and they're not arbitrary. So you don't, if you want like realistic um, color from you know, nature, you can use the color temperature to kind of adjust that. And you can Google color, color temperature chart and it's going to give you like a gradient, uh, like a ramp of colors and with Kelvin values. And then you can just input that value over here and it's going to show you the exact color. And if you tint this, this is a little bug. This is supposed to represent the color. This is, this color should change as you move this, but it's a bug. It doesn't, you know, anyway, 
we can use temperature for now let's just uh, make this nice and warm looking maybe we're gonna move the light higher up and move it to the side well it's a cylindrical object doesn't really matter but let's just angle it and let's make a more a appealing light so right now we have only one light which is kind of equivalent to one point lighting uh, back in the day when the when the black and white movies were a thing um, they were relying on contrast so if this was a black and white image then you would rely on the light and dark values to kind of convey the mood you want right so then they kind of coined the terms one, two, and three point lighting, and they were used to kind of um, use it. They were used to kind of, yeah, um, make a different uh, mood. So if you want something contrasty, something very punchy, you would use one or two point lighting. If you want to soften, uh, let's say you have a female in the shot, you want to soften that and you want to make it look more, you know, appealing, then you can use a third light um, to kind of accentuate. Um, maybe specific features, but yeah, let's not get carried away. Uh, so I'm going to stop the render and I'm going to duplicate this light, control D and I'm going to move it over. I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to shift it towards the blues in the color temperature. So now let's see what we get. So now we have blues coming from this side and orange coming from this side. And we start to get some nice mixing and we have uh, you know the dark side kind of like uh, contrast so now we start to read the object a lot better and it start to look a lot more interesting because now you have a little bit more color harmony happening and you can use this um, as key light and a fill light so a key light would be the main light source. Let's say this would be the sun. So let's just set the camera and play around with this. So I'm going to use this as my key light. So I have my key light coming in lighting my object. Let's bump it up to maybe 16. Yeah. And then if I take this guy and also swing it around a little bit and maybe move it. Oops move it like this and uh, rotate it around so if I have a camera that is something like this then if I disable the fill light this is what my key is doing the key meaning the main light source now why would you add a fill light well this is kind of falling into darkness you're losing all the details that you've done so you would introduce uh, something like the fill light to kind of lift the shadows up and this intensity can be a lot lower than the actual um, key light so the fill light can be let's say like 50% um, because you don't want to, to light your object too evenly that it becomes boring so you, you want to have a bright and a dark side as, um, so maybe even like 0.3 so just enough so that you can read this side but don't um, make it too flat so that would be your, you know, like typical um, um, two-point light setup, and then you can duplicate that fill light. And let's stop the render. It's going to be easier to move the lights around like that. And let's move this one back and behind the barrel. All right, something like that, and let's make this one white just pure white and make it intense so like one now this would be essentially our rim light now check how our object looks right now you have the object against the background but there is nothing to accent that object to separate it to focus it so if you put a light behind it it's gonna give us a nice silhouette so if I start to render right now and if I, I may have move this one too far back yeah it's way too far uh, let's move it up and I need more intensity so let's move it maybe towards one of the sides
There you go. So looking at this, it's only adding a little bit, but it's contributing a lot to the overall read of the object. See if I disable this from here to here. You just add just a little bit of a glance and it's standing out from the background. So that would essentially be our rim light. Um, there's a lot of names for these, like the kick light, um, uh, hair light, and whatever. So a lot of people calling it different in different industries, but it's essentially doing the same thing. You have a light behind the object that is accentu accentuating the silhouette to give you a more appealing um, lighting scenario. And if you see that light is blowing up uh, on the floor, it's a, usually um, the rim lights, you don't want rim lights to affect anything else but the object you want to affect. So if you select this light and the floor and you switch to rendering, you go to lighting and shading, break light links. Now this light does not affect the floor anymore. So if I move it around, you can see the light is wrapping around and I can bring it as close or as far as I want and it's not going to affect the floor. It is breaking physicality. You need to be careful how you use it. So if you, this is called light linking. So if you light link an object to a light, you need to be careful that you don't make it look too unbelievable so it breaks the shot. But it is a tool that you can use. Uh, it's there and um, I just wanted to mention it. All right, so this would conclude the first chapter. And uh, in the next one, we're going to look at HDRI lighting and how is that used in VFX and how what you, can you do with it. So join me in the next chapter, and I'll see you then. Thanks.